Hi, welcome back to the channel for another video from Quinta de Marina. Don't forget we're here courtesy of Glencore Golf and more from them a little bit later on. But and why are you here out in the sunshine and what is it you're going to do? Well, we're going to look at three of the most popular hybrids that are out there right now. But they're not your ordinary hybrids. I'm looking at threes and four hybrids. I'm looking at five hybrids or ones with loft that are there or thereabouts. And to me, these are the products that really should be making their way into the bags of average golfers. And in today's video, I'll tell you why and what separates these three models. As ever, we cannot not discuss the way these clubs look, because for me, it's a big deal. Shelf appeal is massive. And obviously you'll have your opinion and I'll give you mine very, very briefly. I'll start with the Paradigm, which is probably the more classic looking hybrid, if you like with that gloss crown, good clear marking of the Callaway Chevron on the front to centralise the ball. I love the strong white lines that are on the front of the, um, I forgot the name of it now, the Paradigm, which is, it just, it just accentuates the loft, if you like. And for me, that relates to confidence. The more loft I see, the more easier I think a club is going to be to get it airborne, simple as that. And they do a real good job of it. You then go into the, and I'm going to talk about these two together, the crowns of both the um, Ping product and that of the PXG. They're very, very similar in shaping. There's probably a slightly different profile in terms of that Ping product, the G430. And they've both got that matte crown. That's why I'm suggesting we talk about them together. I like both of them, to be quite honest with you. I do like that sort of raised element in terms of the profile on the crown of the PXG. At the front side of it, again, that X marks the spot, simple white dot on the ping, just really gives you good, strong, visible aid in terms of that alignment. They don't have the white score lines quite as protruding as what you can see on, uh, on that Paradigm product, and I do like that, but they do equally present a lot of visible loft at address. I like the fact, again, that all of these have become just a little bit bigger. They're not classic or they're not, they're not the smaller shaped um, hybrids. They are more like mini drivers as I would, or mini fairway woods, as I would like to describe them. And for me, that's a lot nicer profile and address. But that's my opinion. Let me know what yours is. Well, that's probably what we'd expect from a ping. That's a high towering ball flight. I hope we've got enough carry to get it over that edge of the tree line, which was almost perfect, but maybe leaked a little bit to the right. But with that little bit of additional loft and what I'm seeing in general from the ping products throughout the G430 lineup is they've got this mass in a position in each of the clubs, which means the ball just goes up and high. And as we know, that's a massive help for many golfers out there. Now a slightly better line made a bit of an adjustment from the shot with the ping in terms of alignment. A real super strike. First of all, a point to notice when you go from one club to another, literally side by side, it's then you start to notice the difference in the sound and feel. Paradigm is a lot softer, a lot more muted than both the PXG and the Ping product. They're a lot harder off the face. So that's something, again, that you're going to pick up on. But what about the performance? Well, again, Super Ball Flight, this is 24 degrees. Don't forget, two degrees difference from that of the G430. So we're going to see differences in terms of ball flight. And one is not necessarily better than the other. It's about what fits gaps and what fits the kind of ball flight that you like. In many ways, that G430 went perhaps even too high for what I'm looking for in terms of ball flight. And I love that, which was that happy medium. And I also like the feel that comes out this Paradigm lineup. And again, flirting with that tree line. This is a par five, by the way. Maybe a similar line to that of the ping. It's dicing with the uh, tree line. But anyway, in terms of what did I see and what did I feel, this is probably a little bit softer than that of the ping ball flight again, sort of sits very very similar it's hard to see a big difference apart from the fact the ping one literally went very much into orbit the other two were very similar in what they did what i do notice that visibly at address it's a dark face which i'm not overly keen and would like to see um, a little bit more of those score lines but it does seem to present more loft visually on the pxg product than the other two which is an odd one but that's clearly a trick on the eye 
Today's video comes to you in association with long-term channel travel partner Glencore Golf Holidays and we are at Quinta da Marina in Cascai, Portugal. The hotel and golf course have been a superb place to play and stay in the Portuguese sunshine and the proximity to Lisbon Airport and nearby Cascai make it the perfect European golf destination. So if you like what you see in today's video, then make sure you click on the link in the video description below or head on over to glencoregolf.com for more booking information. So if you're struggling with confidence on the tee, then maybe this kind of hybrid is ideal for you to reach for. Fairly tight and narrow tee shot on a par four here at Kinsta Marina. What do I want? Well, I want to get a fair bit of distance as much as I can achieve down the fairway, but I want to do it with some confidence in my hands because that's a bit of a nervy tee shot. I've got plenty of loft. I don't need to do a great deal because I know the ball speeds are there. So can we just put a nice easy swing and get this thing going down the fairway? And the answer is yes. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a high ball flight. It's got a little bounce out towards that right-hand side, but it was effortless. It's what these clubs do so well. And again, finding it difficult to separate the three in terms of performance, or let's reach down, try exactly the same shot with the other two. And then I'll try and see if I can start to find, as yet in the video, anything that separates these three other than the looks and the loft. I can't deny the fact that I love these score lines that, yep, I know I keep mentioning them, but they just seem to show so much more of the club face at address that, uh, yeah, I really do love what they do. That's probably a similar line. I may be a little bit scared of this left shot here because that's again going towards the group of trees on the right. When again, switch out. So PXG first this time into the paradigm, no doubt about it. Softer feel again, really noticeable. So we've got two things that are separating them now. We've got looks, we've got loft, we've got three, and we've also got the feel because that is so different than the other two. So last but not least is that ping. And again, I'll go back to the score line issue. It is also very visible on the G430 line as well. Um, maybe I was in a darker light before, but yeah, very noticeable here looking down on the ball. They eliminate the lines from the centre of the club face, which sort of frames it, um, again, in a perfect way, to be honest with you. But that matte crown is also very noticeable when you're in the sun. In other words, no glare. But what about performance? What you've seen so far is a difference in ball flight. I hope you're picking that up at least anyway. We've put them all in a very, very similar area. Um, the two... The first two were similar in terms of ball flight. That again, picked the ball up higher. Um, but yeah, well, all we're really showing you in this video is very much the obvious in many ways, but I think at least what that shows is that clubs are doing what they're each intended to do and probably what they would claim in terms of marketing as well. Now, versatility is key with hybrids and I always like to execute this shot on the videos when I'm testing it. And that is a little bit of a dink and run. I'm not sure we've picked the right hole to do it on because this is like lightning down the hill, but we'll try it anyway and I'll see if I can separate these in terms of feel with a little bit of a chip shot. And when I say a little bit of a chip shot, it's a little bit of a dink and run. And that's, to be honest with you, perfect in terms of pace. And I'd be more than happy with that. And apart from the fact that I set it off on the wrong line, what these things do is they just allow you to execute a shot that perhaps you've got the yips with your chipping. You don't like a wedging and with plenty of loft. And all you do is a little bit of a putting stroke and let the little bit of loft that's on there, just pop the ball up and carry it down to the hole. Let's try the other two. That's again, probably not a bad effort. It was interesting again, that just from a visual perspective, I keep saying it, I know, but it just seems that there's more loft on this and of the ping than there is on that PXG somehow. That darker face. Right, let's carry on and we'll go straight into the same scenario and we'll finish off with the ping. Can it get any closer? I'd be relatively happy with those two. But I reckon this could be the one that finishes off. It could actually go in the hole. It could go in the hole, you know. If I'd have hit that a bit firmer, that could have gone in the hole, you know. 
Nothing to separate them again apart from the perhaps the loft and I would uh, in terms of visible loft and also the fact to keep going back to it the paradigm is softer I'm repeating that bit and right next situation is a little bit more crude in many ways in the sense that I've got a wide open fairway I've not got to be too particular about where this ball lands what I really want is as much zip and power and ball speed out of these clubs so is there any difference or again are we just going to see that loft difference play its part we'll start off with the paradigm and this time we're going to perhaps increase that club head speed just a little and see if we can get one firing down there well that's a super start certainly fired out there i said i wasn't too bothered about where it went well it went super straight and that's a good start from paradigm and as with what we found in the paradigm lineup full stop i think there's plenty of ball speed there Next up is the PXG Gen 6. I think it's got a fair way to go to try and beat that. That's a real good ball mark in terms of distance. Let's see what this thing does. Again, just forced it a little bit. You can see that ball fight down the tree line on the left. Nowhere near as good of a strike. Interesting, it's rolled on a fair bit. And with the lower ball flight, it could be that they're not separated that greatly but that was a lot to do with the poorer strike but then again is that what you want to see poorer strike and got away with it and i'll be honest with you what i'm expecting to see is a far different ball flight because uh, those two were certainly more penetrating than what i would have expected and i've got a feeling the ping is going to do what it's done so far and maybe just zip up a little high there you go on cue that's a super ball flight to be fair that comes down softer it'd be interesting to see where it lands in relation to the pxg which is almost on an identical line but the one thing that we've seen that has been consistent throughout is that ping continues to pop that ball up a lot higher than the others right quick stop off up fairway really interesting that's the ping ball that you can see just behind me on the left the other two balls are the pxg uh, and obviously the paradigm who are side by side they got there in very different ways but as you can see from the spread there's absolutely zero to split them right so three hybrids in today's test what did i find what did i learn well what i learned was they have three damn good hybrids to be honest with you and there's every reason why they're in this test together pretty much think they're the three best that are out there right now a little bit of difference in loft and like i said this experiment was not about comparing how far each of these go even though we have uh, tried giving them all a bit of a whack as well and we've seen that that one maybe two degrees of difference it's not made a huge difference in terms of that all out performance but overall we've seen the ping product unquestionably launches that ball considerably higher I've said that all the way the paradigm is a softer feel than the other two PXG probably sits in the middle of those two in terms of what I've just said about both. And from a looks perspective, while it's very personal, I think the PXG had addressed that crown size, the matte crown, everything about that is, as I've said in previous videos, maybe the best looking hybrid that's on the market right now, in my opinion. So then you've got to look at price tags and I'm not going to get into that debate. You spend the money how you choose. So I'm not going to pass comments on that, but they're all considerations that you are going to make. The main lesson to be learned, I think, from this video and the main takeaway is that a high lofted hybrid is well worth having in the bag because it's very versatile, performs from a number of different situations and is ultra forgiving at the same time. So that's the key message that I hope you got like I did from today's video. Right, as ever, thank you for watching. Thanks to Kinsta Marina for who's knows on a lovely sunny day in Portugal and for Glencore for arranging this trip. I will see you all tomorrow night.